here, so make sure your hair is looking shut. Oh, good morning, uh, dear everyone. Uh, it's, it's great to be here to share. What? Is it turned on, Josh? Go help him, Kelly. Is there an electrician in the house? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's on. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to start this morning by just reading a verse. This is 1 Peter 1, verse 3, and it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So really, this verse is saying here that we could not come to know God. We could not be born again unless Jesus had been raised with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, I'm here to tell my story of my life before I knew Christ. Before I was born again. And um, not a lot of people know this, but uh, I, I think today, honestly, if God had not stepped into my life, I think I, I might be in jail today. I, I might have killed someone. Um, it goes back to when I was in junior high. But basically, all my life, my parents had had, go, had to go to church. So I, I grew up in it. I prayed prayers. Maybe some of you young people have prayed prayers. and But for me, and maybe for you, it never really registered. Something never happened in my heart. It never made a drop from up here down my heart. And so, basically, I rejected everything. I totally rejected God. Um, when I was about uh, 14, uh, 15, I said, I don't want anything to do with God. I actually said, I, I hate God. I said, I hate my parents. I hate my sister. I, I hate life. Um, I lived life the way I wanted to. I had addictions. I had bondage. Um, and then I got, in, I got into some really bad kids at school. And it was so bad that I actually got expelled from school in eighth grade. And um, the teachers actually said, they said, there's, they, they said to my parents, they said, there's no hope for Josh. He'll be in jail each for murder. And actually, the way it was going with my friends and the gangs and the things that I was doing, the bondage and the secret sins that I had in my life, it was just like this, this huge burden that I just, I bore it every day. And, it's, and you know what? I didn't even realize I was carrying it. I thought I was just doing what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm living life the way I want, but man, I had no joy. I had no peace. And um, here's the thing. My parents, they just, they just kept praying for me. They had the whole church praying for me. The whole youth group was praying for me. Um, and I'll tell you what. My dad was just faithful to just ask people for prayers after prayers after prayers. And God hears prayers. The fact that I'm here today is an answer to prayer. It totally is. Because here's what happened. I was 15. I was playing a lot of basketball, a lot of sports. And I didn't do drugs because I wanted to stay at least, you know, I wanted to stay so straight so I could be playing sports. So this is what I'm about to tell you is not something that was induced by drugs. This is for real, legit. I was going into my bed one night at 15, I turned off the lights, and all of a sudden, God answered those prayers, and I just, I just saw the flames of fire of, of hell just flash across my mind. So here's this 15-year-old who thinks he's invincible, you know, seeing these flames of hell. And then, I'm seeing this as I'm getting in my bed, everything's dark, and then I heard a voice. And it was the voice of Jesus. And he said, Josh, that is where you would be if you were to die tonight. Now imagine that happened to you as a 15-year-old. What would that do to you? Well, for me, it shook me up. I said, I never thought, I mean, okay, I thought about heaven, I thought about hell, I've heard about those things. Jesus talks about those in Scripture. I, 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 you know, I believe there's a God, but all of a sudden, it's like God brought it right here. And I, said, I was very fearful. I said, you know, I don't know where I'm going. I, I, actually, I know where I'm going when I die. I'm going to the flames. And you know, I really think if you look in Scripture, it, it really does talk about an eternal hell, eternal fire. And actually, the eternal fire that it talks about in Scripture, I believe is God's wrath. 
The more and more I look at this, it says that people who have not believed in Christ, have not repented of their sin, have been born again. Jesus says you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? He says they will be punished in the presence of the Lamb, in the fire, and the God's wrath forever and ever. I mean, that's massive. That's huge. He came to me at 15, and I said, well, what am I going to do? I mean, if this is really the case, I mean, I prayed the prayer or something. I, I prayed to God, so what do I need to do? Well, right around that time, some uh, relatives, uh, Christian relatives of my parents said, you know, you should make Josh go to this Bible seminar and come to town. It, it helps out juvenile delinquents, so you should just send your son. <laughs> so they did. They, they forced me to go, and it was against my will. Um, but I had just kind of been awakened to thinking about God and, and, and what the things we're just talking about here, and hellfire, and like... For once, I was thinking about that a lot. And the whole time at this Bible seminar that I went, I, again, I didn't want to go, but they just pumped Bible at me all day long. It was it was a whole week-long seminar. And, I mean, I'm hearing Scripture everywhere. I'm hearing people getting saved and, and people who are getting free from addictions. And, and, you know, I started thinking about my life. I said, you know, I'm, I'm like this. I, I'm like these people with addictions, and I, I don't have joy, and I wish I had peace. And, you know, I... I really believe Jesus has died for me? And something started happening in my heart. And you know what's interesting? Because the Word of God says we're born again through what? The Word of God. So it says in James 1. So if you're here today and you're saying, how oh, do I get born again? Experience this new birth through Christ. Start reading the Scripture. I don't do it. So I get pumped with the Word of God. At the end of that week, something happened. I didn't pray. But my mother, again, is She's a very godly Christian. She was just praying one morning, and all of a sudden, God laid it on her heart. I was down in my room doing something, and she didn't want to bother me. We had a terrible relationship anyway. And all of a sudden, she felt like the Holy Spirit just whispered to her. She said, and the Holy Spirit said, Margaret, go down to Josh's room and ask him if he wants to become a Christian. <laughs> and she said, God, what are you asking me to do? I mean, the judge hates me. Why would I go down there and ask if he wants to become a Christian? But it wouldn't leave her. Those thoughts wouldn't leave her. So it kept pestering her. And my, my mom, she, she obeys the Holy Spirit. And I'm so grateful that she does. And so finally, she said, Okay, Lord, I'm going to go. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'll go in faith. So she came down the long journey down the 20 <laughs> stairs to my room. And uh, she knocked on the door, and I was just, I had my head down, and I was, I was at my desk or whatever. and. And she didn't know this, but I was actually thinking about how rotten my life was. And how I was just sick of living it on my own. But she, not the nurse, said, Josh, I don't know what you're going to say to this, but I feel like I need to ask you today. Do you want to get right with God? Do you want to repent of your sin and believe on Christ to save you? That's what the scripture says you can do. You can be born again. And I said, my answer surprised me. I said, Mom, I've been thinking about that all week. I said, yes, I want to become a Christian. Right now, I want to be born again. She said, we pray right now. I said, okay. And so I started confessing my sin to God. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I really believe you did that for me. I want, to, I want you to make me new. And the Bible says that before that happens in our life, before we're born again, it says we are dead. We can't respond to God. We're just lost. At that moment, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I got new life. This is if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. It says he raises us up to newness of life. And at that point, all of a sudden, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. How can I say this? I, I thought of God all the time, all of a sudden. I couldn't get God on my mind. And then I was very, very aware of all these sins that, that I had sin, that had been sinning. And I was like, I can't do that anymore. That's not right. I didn't even know they were there, but they were. I used to swear all the time. I couldn't swear anymore. It was just dumb. And then I felt like doing good to everybody. I just wanted to be good to everybody. I had not wanted to do that before. I just lived for myself. And, and all of a sudden, and my sister, okay, whom we had a terrible relationship with, and now we're like the best of friends. Um, she's two years younger than me. But uh, she goes to my parents, like, three days after this. My mom, I think she kind of forgot what happened. Like, what happened, you know, when we prayed. But Josh was praying before. But my sister came up to my mom and said, 
hey, what, what's happened to Josh? She didn't know me to pray. She, what happened to Josh? He's actually nice to me now. <laughs> so, I, um, that, that's my story of how I came to newness of life. And I started reading the scripture all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, it was feeding me before it hadn't. <clears throat> and I knew at that time that I had been born again. And I had peace. And I had joy. I felt very light. And I guess it's just my honest, my honest um, desire for every one of you here that if you've not experienced that yet, boy, I'm just praying that it does happen to you. And it makes the 18 inch drop. Because it's true. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, we don't deserve it. He has caused us to be born again. To live in hope through the rush of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Let me share it. Thank you.